I absolutely love panoramic stitching. I think it's one of the ways to get an extremely high quality, high resolution image without spending the money on a $80,000 Hasselblad or a phase one back or what have you. It gives you images that are just mind boggling in detail and it's just a really, really cool thing to do. Now, let me show you how not to do it. Now, one of the things you have to really kind of concentrate is how you capture the image. And the most important consideration, other than the obvious things, which are to overlap your image by 30 to 50% from one image to the next, and it also shoot from left to right, going from right to left confuses Photoshop. So go ahead and go from left to right. But the most important thing to consider is when you make your exposure, make sure your aperture is set at either 5.6 or 7.1 preferably 7.1 because that is how you get rid of the vignetting. When you have vignetting, in other words, when you shoot the images that you're going to stitch together at 2.8, you're introducing a huge amount of vignetting into each individual image. And when that happens, this is what your final image is going to look like. Now, Photoshop did its best to avoid it, but there was no getting around the fact that you've got these vertical dark streaks in the image ever so often and that's because the edges of the image were darker than the center of the image from one image to the next and so you get this I don't know what to call it jail cell looking pattern on your finished product and that's not what you want that's very definitely not what you want so I'm gonna go ahead and kill this one and we're gonna start by going to file automate photo merge and when the dialog box opens we're gonna click on browse and we're gonna drill down to where these images are located and we're going to pick these four, hold down the shift key, left click to select them all, hit OK. And you can see they're loaded here, two, three, four, and five. We're going to put together four images. And yes, we are doing the raw images. It will work wonderfully on raw. And really, that's how I do it now. I used to convert everything into a TIFF and then photo merge the TIFFs. Uh, but this saves me a little bit of work and it works just as well. So go ahead and hit OK. And then from this point forward, it's an automated process. You just sit back and wait for Photoshop to get finished and take a look at the finished product once it is done. Now depending on a number of variables in your computer this could take a while so you have to be patient. Alright now once everything is completed and you get blended process is finished this is what you will see and by no means is this the finished product and notice here too let's zoom in just a little bit and let me show you what you're gonna see and not be upset about it. See these little cracks in the image. These little cracks are just telling you where each of the individual images are. So if we click on the layers tab we can see a little better how that is arranged and if we zoom back out again if I disconnect the top layer you can see that segment of the image and so on. So don't be dismayed when you see those cracks. The way to get rid of those cracks is come up here and flatten the image. Once you flatten the image all those cracks will disappear as you see there. Now I got very lucky in this capture and everything is perfectly level so I don't have to do any leveling which you might have to but as I sit here and talk about it and look at it I think I might have something to do here so I'm just gonna come in like this with the straighten tool and come all the way over here so it was off just ever so slightly so I'm gonna go ahead and correct that now I'm gonna crop it so I'm gonna bring those crop areas in right there just gonna pull it in maybe just a bit more this way double click and now we have our finished image. Now we have other things to do obviously but let me show you the real benefit of this. Let's look at the resolution and we, we look at a resolution here of about 27 to 28 megs out of a 21 megapixel camera and you can do panos that are much much larger than this in terms of resolution. I've, I've done some panos that were as much as 60 70 megs. Uh, my pano, let's see I had 25 images in my pano of San Francisco and it ran somewhere in the neighborhood of 90 megs. The detail was mind-boggling and I'm still working on an image that's why I'm not showing it to you I'm still doing things to it uh, but but there really is no limit to the number of images you can put together I mean you can go 180 degrees if you want to and then if you really want to know the true resolution of the finished product just multiply the height by the width and you'll get you know this is looking like somewhere around 30 megs in round numbers we'll go ahead and hit OK on that now let's look at the other thing that I want to show you which is the benefit of doing these and this is the incredible detail that you get out of the finished product so let's navigate down and obviously this was taken at the Grand Canyon and look at the detail on there look at that 
I mean, that is just wonderful. And let's just zoom out here on a gradual basis so you can kind of get a feel for how much detail there was in this image. I mean, that's pretty freaking good, I'm thinking. So there we have it. And we'll go ahead and take this back to 100%. Now we're going to do a few things to this image. In the next lesson, to finish this off, it looks very flat and it needs more things done to it. So stick around. In the next movie, we're going to finish up this beautiful stitch panoramic image.